Highlighting the transformative potential of sustainable finance in nation building, Sadhan hosted the National Conference on Inclusive Growth 2024 at the Ashoka Hotel in Delhi. With the theme, Driving Sustainable Development Through Inclusive Finance, the event brought together leaders in microfinance, policymakers, investors, sustainability experts, and other key stakeholders. Their goal to strategize on sustainable finance as a tool for inclusive growth, paving the way toward a resilient, prosperous future. We have been holding this uh, national conference for the last 20 years. This is the 19th year we are having the national conference. And uh, the basic idea of this conference is to uh, have bring all the uh, policy level uh, stakeholders onto one platform and to deliberate and to pave way for the new policy direction for the micro sector. So these two sessions, these two days, uh, the conference is going in full swing and we have more than 800 delegates uh, registered and uh, participating in this. As microfinance takes on a pivotal role in India's journey toward a Vikasit Bharat, the conference explored strategic pathways for the microfinance industry over the next decade. The event opened with a ceremonial inauguration by the Honorable Chief Guest, M. Nagaraju, IAS Secretary of DFS, Ministry of Finance. Following the ceremony, Mr. K. Paul Thomas, MD and CEO of ESAF Small Finance Bank and Chairperson of Sadhan, delivered the welcome address followed by an inaugural session by Mr. M. Nagaraju, Secretary DFS, Ministry of Finance. Topic of this year's national conference is driving sustainable development through inclusive finance. Financial inclusion has significantly contributed to sustainable development goals, SDGs. SDGs came in 2015 as adopted by UN and India too as a signatory. However, Sadhan and its members were engrossed it, in it already for decades by then. I don't think there is any other institutional segment that contributed to UN SDGs as much as the financial inclusion sector. Financial inclusion initiatives have made contributions to all 17 SDGs. Following can be listed particularly as one where significant impact has been made. SDG 1, no poverty. SDG 2, zero hunger. 3, good health and well-being. 4, quality education. 5, gender equality. 6, clean, and clean water and sanitation. 7, affordable and clean energy. 8, uh, decent work and uh, economic growth. I can go till uh, SDG 17. So how our sector contributed to each uh, SDGs. The Financial inclusion, I think all of you are aware, in the last 15, 20 years has been one of the priority uh, sectors for the government to bring everyone who is not uh, financially included, to bring every region, to uh, bring every place to the financial inclusion so that they will be able to access multiple products and get benefit of the financial sector. Now, I'm also glad that uh, Sadhan has completed 25 years and uh, you have been uh, hand-holding MFIs in the country and you have been recognized as a SRO by the RBI. I hope you will continue to develop uh, required policies to support and create required uh, ecosystem for uh, development of uh, the MFIs in the country. SIDB and MFIs are inseparable, uh, like Siamese twins. We are in there since beginning. Uh, since you know the incubation period from NGOs to MFIs, transformation loans into the formal companies, infusion of equity in large number of MFI, uh, to be precise, 71 of you. And, and you know, steering MFI sector in the time of crisis of 2010, creation of lenders forum, and propagation of responsible lending practices. There's so many things we have been doing together, together with the MFI sector. When we open up the uh, microfinance sector to market, I think there need to be proper systems and controls, proper regulations, 
and in fact government of india and uh, reserve bank of india are taking efficient effective steps to uh, to sensitize the players uh, once we look back uh, nabard started uh, this microfinance uh, uh, activities way back in 88 as an action research project which scaled up as an ssg bangladesh program in 1992 over the two days the conference featured a series of engaging plenary sessions and discussions the first of which was moderated by sector expert vijay mahajan on the theme sustainable microfinance as a catalyst for inclusive development and growth you are already i think very much aware of the the current situation of the sector uh, and <clears throat> there are many pressing concerns uh, some institutions are facing you know high npas high compared to my finance standards others are facing regulatory action still others are facing various other types of hurdles we are looking at uh, uh, taking digital technology to the last mile not only because we want to help them just do a transaction but it is an empowerment tool uh, in our organization we have created a app for the customer which creates a lot of transparency for the customer she can check on her loan she can check a loan track record she can check uh, how much outstanding is there she doesn't have to depend on the field officer to just to know what is her repayment date what is her outstanding and stuff so that is an empowerment stuff way back in 2014 along with professor renuka sane susan did a paper on the andhra microfinance crisis and its impact on the poor in her terminology it was quote and quote a natural experiment because something was done in andhra and nothing was done regulatorily uh, in the neighboring states i think that the focus uh, when we started the inaugural session was growth of customers and their households right and so uh, it's 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 an obvious thing that if we growth on the if we focus on the growth of the customer obviously the sector that serves a growing customer base or a growing customer itself is going to grow and we've got hard evidence of this from the last 30 years day one of the conference witnessed another session with expert speakers making their contribution with the theme of the new regulatory framework in microfinance experiences so far which was moderated by the executive editor of CNBC TV 18 Lata Venkatesh I would say an extremely evenly balanced and representative panel is what we have over here so straight away to you Mr Jyoti Prakash Sharma the CGM from Reserve Bank why did you change the rules just allow me to go back in time uh, a little bit uh, the the original MFI regulations they came out in uh, 2011 after the ap crisis uh, at that time uh, we did not have any entity which was classified as nbfc mfi so after the ap crisis we uh, categorized a new set of nbfcs as nbfc mfis and came out with the specific regulation for those nbfcs uh, that was the time when uh, microfinance sector was you know uh, it was served by those mfis banks were not there uh, but then as has happened in other areas also like in gold loans and other other things uh, wherever nbfc succeed then banks follow you know here also the banks followed assessment of income has that been uh, you know a smooth affair everything hinges on that because 50% the real cap is that you cannot give loans beyond 50% of the serviceability uh, 50% of the income going to serviceability have you been able to zero in on how to assess income we are primarily catering to the economically weaker section primarily catering to the households in rural india which is all informal economy and in that scenario there will be very difficult and i would rather say that any point in time you can say i have assessed income absolutely bang on these are not formal incomes they don't get salary certificates or for that matter many of them do not even put an it uh you know they are not into the it assessment gambit so you have to take a certain call industry is learning most of us in the industry have now when it all came we actually moved from let's say the step one which was essentially a declaration and corroboration to now declaration 
and validation. So clearly the last two quarters have been difficult quarters for the MFI sector. What was the important event before that change of rules? So can you link the two? Change of rules led to higher defaults? Uh, recently some guards have been lowered like multiple lenders, single borrower getting multiple lenders. Borrowers have also become over smart. So, uh, they are able know, to give you multiple they are, they, identities. They are, they are able to give multiple identities and they are able to take uh, loans from different and you, it's very difficult for a MFI operating to f actually find out how many loans he has taken. So I think these are the issues which have led to this problem right now where the delinquencies have gone slightly higher, the collection efficiencies have come down. But I believe that with the guardrails put by both the uh, SROs, uh, things will normalize and this industry is well aware of the problems that is problem that is facing them and they will certainly take care of this. Okay. As an outsider, Mr. Sharma, what is your sense? Do you see red flags? For me, it's about the RBI, as I said, reposing faith that the sector has matured. So let's demonstrate back to the RBI that we are a mature sector. We can regulate, we can self-regulate. And I think that's the way it should be. Any cap of any sort means that, you know, the, uh, the central bank still considers you to be a kid on the block and is, is basically, you know, holding a stick to your head. Thank you very much. I think it's been a fruitful discussion of understanding the ambiguities of uh, the scenario in which the microfinance industry operates. It's a great kind of a gathering and a lot of uh, new thoughts have been uh, discussed about how we can progress further, how we can take financial inclusion forward, how we can take uh, the work towards the benefit of the borrower and take the industry forward. How the industry is thinking and what could be the potential way forward. Uh, when you go back from here, you actually go back with, you know, list of things that you want to implement, you want to think it through, you want to bring it to the next level of uh, debate, discussion, strategize and all. Day two of the conference offered further insightful sessions, beginning with a discussion on the role of microfinance in the journey toward Viksit Bharat, featuring Saurabh Garg, IAS Secretary of the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, and Charan Singh, non-executive chairman of Punjab and Sindh Bank and founder director, Egro Foundation. I was wondering with the vast experience that you have and the exposure that you have in your PhD as well as in your previous assignment, in the current assignment, how would you think about microfinance playing a role in this transformation of our country from where we were in 51 when we started planning to the Viksit Bharat which the Prime Minister is talking. For example, the National Rural Livelihoods Mission, the Din Dialanta Yojana, Yojana NRLM, is one significant uh, intervention which has led to more than 1.4 crore self-help groups. And out of that, 1.2 crore are bank linked and many or most of them are microfinance. So I'm sure that will be an area continued focus and perhaps it will be much more in the National Urban Livelihood Mission where right now it's the focus is the numbers are much lower uh, than the NRLM. And uh, given the fact that uh, uh, more and more will be urbanized, so that would be a big focus area going forward. Post the engaging discussion, there was an inspiring panel themed, Lakpati Didi, elevating the SHG model to the next level through enterprise promotions which was moderated by Tamil Bandhyopadhyay, consulting editor, business standard speakers. Now, SHG move, SHG to Lakpati Didi is essentially a graduation. You know, you, uh, there are pros and cons that we'll discuss and our, our um, uh, panelists will talk about that. But uh, Lakpati Didi uh, is essentially from a group you become you graduate and you become a Lakpati. Really the success of the self-help group movement in this country is something that, you know, is celebrated, that we celebrate, uh, you know, uh, at, at, a, at an international level because the, uh, the maturity of the framework 
uh, which is guiding it, which is the National Rural Livelihood Mission. I think the, uh, the, the kind of governance structure that exists, I think all of this is such a phenomenal success. And I think now really is the next time, uh, next uh, step, uh, like uh, what Ms. Uh, Smriti Sh uh, Sharan was also mentioning, is that the whole individual graduation piece, these women are more than ready to take on and become entrepreneurs. The whole women's economic empowerment strategy hinges on what NRLM does. Uh, whether it's a, you know, the financial inclusion, whether it's a gender integration, whether it's a livelihood promotion, whether it's a Lakhpati Didi, our whole thinking and strategy hinges on what NRLM does, uh, you know, the various activities. SSG is a fantastic institution built over the years, as you pointed out, has grown, it has enabled the entrepreneurial spirit of the common man from towns and villages, great. Banking system, he very pointed out, very nicely, has taken a lot of initiative into making credit accessible. These are large institutional initiatives. A large number of women who have begun their journey from the self-help group have now matured and are eligible and are keen to take individual loans to set up their own individual enterprise. And this growing phenomena in the country has been noted by nobody less than the Honorable Prime Minister of India, who during the last year's speech at the Red Port on the occasion of Independence Day, he said that his dream is to make two crore Lakhpati Devis. The event's final session, The Future of Microfinance in India, was moderated by Professor M.S. Sriram from IIM Bengaluru, offering insights into the sector's evolving landscape. How do you look at this ecosystem that is built for the future? Is it uh, good enough? And how do you overcome this current speed breaker that has come in? And how do you look at it? I think the regulator has its role and they have played a very important role in nurturing this sector and building this sector the way where it is today uh, at around 4.3 trillion uh, rupees of Asurinda management and 8.5 and crore customers. I think uh, what has happened with the liberalization of uh, the regulation is, uh, I think more than anything, the regulator has created a level playing field. How do you think that we could uh, deepen and go one level lower, that's one challenge. And uh, do we know our customer enough? How this changes technology abroad, okay, has re uh, really increased the speed of the disbursement, increased the efficiency of the, uh, of the uh, industry. Then third, actually, uh, in terms of the ecosystem, I mean, we didn't have really credit bureau as effective as we have it today. I mean, uh, we, we are, all, of course, um, uh, uploading the, uh, the customer's data on a daily basis, okay? That's very, very effective, right? And then we didn't have really SFBs before. I think SFBs came into being really in 2015. So th I'm, I'm trying to really give a, uh, give a sense of like, you know, how this industry has been mainstreamed on many, many fronts, right? Uh, as far as the MFI model is concerned, you've been sort of uh, doing bulk lending and so on. Uh, going forward, how do you look at uh, this space? Direct lending, we will continue to do, all banks will continue to do as part of their priority sector obligation as well as we have our brick and mortar models. We have also tied up with fintechs, which was not the case uh, till five or six years back. There, our cost of operations are much higher. Now we have also onboarded digital channels, technology partners, so as to create a distribution channel which is much more efficient in terms of cost and turnaround time. How has life changed from being an MFI to an SFB? Is it better? Is it worse? Would you rather not have taken the decision? That's one. Uh, because now you're dealing with both sides of the balance sheet. Otherwise, you're dealing with only one side of the client balance sheet. When we say fintech as a microfinance institution, so I'm, I'm a you know, banker, but with uh, all due respect, the way we thought of microfinance, the way even you know, Grameen must have thought of microfinance to around 50 years back, it was a community-based approach, it was a family-based approach, and it was for income generation for the entire family. I think hardcore fintech doesn't, doesn't work that way. And that may be one of the reasons why we are seeing a lot of heat also. I mean, that is one of the reasons, not the only reason. So my sense is if you're looking at the hardcore microfinance, it is for income generation and, and it is with a community-based approach. If you have a community-based approach, then there has to be a physical touch with the customer. Thank you, my fellow panelists, all of you, for uh, these uh, insightful comments. Uh, thank you. 
The two-day conference concluded with a felicitation of sponsors and partners, followed by a closing address and vote of thanks from Sadhan's CEO and Executive Director, Gigi Mamen. More than everything, I let me thank uh, the, par uh, the participants. In fact, for information, we had more than 800 registrations. More than 800 registrations, and yesterday you must have seen the hall was full, brimming with, uh, I mean, say, uh, with uh, the participants. Of course, I can understand by the end of the second day, people will have urgency to move out, so, so that's why we don't find so many, but still I'm happy to see so many people still around. So thank you so much, and I look forward for your continued support. You make, the, uh, make our uh, events and make our, uh, uh, our uh, existence worthwhile. My thanks to all our member institutions. In fact, members are our strength. They are the, we are a member-driven organization. We, we are here because of the members. So all our members have been very supportive and they have been able to... If you see our partners list, almost 15 of them are our own members. So that shows that members are owning up this program. So that's a great, uh, I would say, great achievement uh, and I would value that.